Fox Sports. Bang and Bargy fighting to get to that first corner. Alessi gets the whole shot, but battle. It's Andrew Short at the front with Roxon right alongside and the bright yellow. By Roxon down through the rhythm section. Let's see if Andrew Short can answer. Ten. Ryan Dungey. He must have clipped somebody. We'll see if we have that replay as Roxon is out front. He's the bike that he'd been on yep. uh, most of his career yeah, before he moved like, to KTM. He grew up on that bike. Ken Roxon to the finish line. He wins the season opener. Ride Roxon two victories in a row at the season opener. In the high, live on Fox Sports 1. The inside. Who's going to come out with the lead? Boy, this one's tight as whole shot. Lost the position, and now he's got the spot back again. He's going to have the lead right there on the 94. He's on the yellow bike, flying through the nighttime sky. In this mix, oh, here comes Roxon inside of Millsap. Their second place the podium in the season opener two weeks ago. Roxon thinking about the lead. He's got it. And how about Chad Reed, two-time winner here in this same building last year. Top blow for that Butler Brothers team, BTO Sports KTM. They lost Brayton earlier in Anaheim a year ago. And now he's going to find himself dropping in the end. It's coming up. It was 3.8. They're finally catching up to somebody. And we've talked this season, Ralph, that a fifth for Tickle is an outstanding ride. No doubt about it coming back off of injury, but Kim comes winning two in Anaheim so far in 2015. Points leader, Ken Roxon. What a night it has been for Ken Roxon. Yes. Right here, he makes the move on Reed and his first big mistake of the season. Looks behind him. Smashes into the crossbar. Sideways, the revs are up and the gate is down. Inside Barsha, that 51, trying to get another hole shot. He gets edged out. It's Ken Roxon. Get a little bit slick in some spots, but great start for Ken Roxon. This is exactly what he wanted. And the question is, where is Ryan Dungey to make something happen? Because this guy, Ken Roxon, if you give this guy some momentum, he starts feeling the confidence. And here's Roxon leading. Let's show you the motorsport.com whole shot replay. This is how Roxon was able to get the check. It's a kind of shiny area. They become slick. It's all, you know, the first motor, Bosha, which uh, has helped dull the pain, but he hasn't been able to ride and train like normal, and he's still riding well. Moto win and just going out and dominating this motor was probably the most important thing. Ken Roxon wins the moto here at Muddy Free Class. Coming your way here live at NBCSN. Roxon a little slow on the reaction. He's not going to do it twice. Now he's got the motorsport.com hole shot. Barsha right there with him, and Roxon as well. But he needs to do that every day. <laughs> yes, totally different rider today compared to the previous four races. So Barsha was in this position in the first moto on that Auto Trader uh, Toyota Yamaha and went down. This is going to be interesting. Porcel looked in the first one. Oh, Roxon, slight little mistake there. Foot off the peg, but look at this. Run and try and run because, like we said in the KTM Keys the Motor, can anyone beat Dungey? Roxon looks fired up. But well, now he's trying to figure out a line around Barsha. Where did he figure that part out? I haven't seen anyone go that far to the inside. The exact he's able to do that double down the hill, so he couldn't make it. The inside is actually quicker, but you can't double that downhill from the inside. Didn't so need it. Four of arguably the best riders in the class right now. Roxon up the inside and tries. He won. He got stuck behind Porcel. Able to make it happen as Porcel shuts the door. Well, I love seeing this. I was very curious. Porcel moving into the 450 against the established veterans of the 450 class. He's giving Roxon all he can handle right now. I think Roxon's got him on the outside. Anyone as much as Dungey, and Dungey doesn't want to be anyone else as much as Roxon. These two. Like Ome is something that we're learning more and more about each and every year and the damaging effects it has. And you gain a second. If you make a mistake, you lose a second. It, you know, these guys pace for these front two, I should say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we just thought, okay, well, the champ is out. Yep. The, the reigning champ is done for the season. And then all of a sudden, it's Wait, not much. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it keeps fluctuating. But Dungey has got rocks in his sights. And this is for the overall. And then immediately back on oh, yeah. the gas. And it's back to the battle. And Dungey now is close. 
he can smell the exhaust fumes. On the ground, not allowed to jump jumps flag, so I hope Schmillian's okay. And uh, I think Dungey's even closer than he was before. And a very tricky track with all these ruts. Unbelievable, and with a two minute, three second lap for Roxon. So Roxon's got it up to four seconds now. Dungey's in the hat in this one, and Roxon's gonna come out on top. He wins high point 2015. You think he's happy? But the tiebreaker is the second moto Roxon has won, and considering where he started, five weeks ago. Here we go, once again, a restart, a moto two. It is, no, it's Porcel, 377 beating him to the line. The other Husqvarna rider. It's the first time around, but what a great start for Christoph Porcel. He looks solid in the first moto. <laughs> you know he's going to put some pressure on for the lead. And Roxon right behind Dungey trying to get him for third place. Corner. Man, that Yamaha's got some horsepower, and he put it all to the ground, Bam Bam style, wide open. Yes. And soaring eagle Jimmy John Suzuki, that's one, two, three, four. Then Anderson on another Rockstar Husky. He was so close, he had to jump at an angle just to make sure he wasn't going to land at the back of Paul Selman. And it didn't even seem like it bothered them at all. We weren't even worried about it. Look at Roxon around the outside. This is an even bigger jump. Grub and stay low on that double stick. Oh, oh. Dungey! Re well, he he wasn't off the... It's my old teammate. Roxon's Nemesis. got him. Outside line. It's going to be an outside again, though. And Dungey beats him to it. Completely different lines. It's side by side. Still. Oh. Wow. And they scrub Dungey and Roxon fighting. And I'm talking about a fight. Whoa. Three wide coming out of that corner. Barsha is getting away. Roxon... <laughs> Porcel probably even went, whoa, 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 what happened? Yeah, he got passed on both sides, and now Dungey's back after Roxon. What I can do, and I can show you I'm better than you, so it, this is like a, what I'd like to call an ego race right now. Injured and out, these are the only three riders to win this year. Yep. So, uh, great, great way to end the season. On the inside, trying to show a wheel to Roxon, let him know he's back there, and while they fight each other, they are closing up a bit here. But who will be the one that gets to Barsha first? Will it be Roxon? Oh, Dungey! Dungey goes down, and Austin Barsha in second, digging so hard. He had the lead. Ken Roxon got around him. Watch Roxon through this middle. I mean, just absolutely rails Whoa. that rut with just so much momentum. He definitely seems more comfortable and happier with with the bike, and we've heard a lot of Anderson and Porsche have gone back a little bit. They're sixth and seventh after the good starts. Grant, Baggett, and Nicoletti at Mount Morris, where he put on a great performance, and we thought, hey, he's back. This yeah. is going to be a great second half. It does happen, so you really, like you said, never know. Checkered flag is out. Ken Roxon ends the year with a moto win here in Indiana. Yeah, things came around in the last three uh, in the last three races, so really happy to finish it out, out on top. Going to go into off season and get my body ready. You know, with uh, with the surgery on the back and stuff. So uh, glad to finish it out. And uh, thanks to Soaring Eagle, Jimmy John's Factory, Suzuki team. Took us a while, but we got it. The top three riders with the best shot of that $100,000 check all running in the top three. Look now as he possibly, well, he stays in second. But you're top three in points. Top three others in the tower there. And right into the tower he went. A scary moment there for Drake, including Chad Reed. You see those numbers highlighted in green over there. So when would you guys, as we get to the... Gonna have to drive that new Toyota Tundra home. First time we've had somebody win the truck, right? G Supercross season. He was the man to beat before having some problems. I mean, he's flowing really, really good, putting himself in good positions. His corners look good. Oh, I'm happy for Ken. I'm happy for the whole crew, everybody working hard. And, uh, you know, this is a tough field here. And he's done it. He's won the $100,000 check. Team Monster Energy Cup. Off the track, ready to celebrate the gloves. The gloves drop the gate. She's kind of buried in there a little bit. Another KD with the good start naps. Who comes out with the lead and rocks it around the outside and into the front. Watson to win his first main of the season. Rocks it out front. Nil saps in second. Triple. Rocks it really quick through the Dragon's back. This is the type of start that... Taking a look at the gap there. Tomac. 
About two seconds behind. Go. The lead was 2.2 seconds. That time is 1.8. It looks like less. Dungy wins the next three. Ken Roxon trying to Ken Roxon on his way to checkers in Phoenix. Second shot from Texas. He had the speed for a podium or possibly a win. Meanwhile, his teammate, Ryan Dungey Roxon, is going. That allows Dungey, as the race is happening, to miss and see that. He doesn't see where he's better than Dungey or not. So Roxon has to use his instinct. What I can tell you is on the board, it says simply want it with an exclamation point. Oscar works with Ken Roxon, Carlos with Ryan Dungey. Here comes Dungey! Get into it. That's going to feed Ryan Dungey. That's going to make the heart rate of Roxon jump even further to the left, trying to stop Dungey's line through the second part of the look. Dungey tries to square it up a little bit. Roxon moves back over to take the line away. Going the other hand, showing incredible composure right now and mental focus. He pulls out of the way. One to go. Roxon with the lead. Dungey, can he do it? Back into the woods. Dungey to the far left. To the corner. Dungey comes off strong. Looks More like a traffic. couple of out. Only a few turns left for the champ if he wants to win here in Texas. The checkers in Texas go to Roxanne. His second win of the year. Dungey comes in with a second. And how? Critical Tomac to the inside of Dungey. And a new leader just like that. Oh, what a tough break for the two-time champion. Boy, this battle's going to get aggressive here at the front. Dungey right there behind him. Seeley makes his way through. He's here tonight, lined up wheel to wheel. Oh, and Roxon gets to the inside of Tomac. Boy, he's so good through that. Keeps the Kawasaki in front, but for how long? To the crowd's delight in fourth. We scan right there in fifth. This physical fitness will play a part if they race wheel to wheel like this. The strongest. 1.6 seconds in front of Tomac. Last lap around, Roxon was at a 54. Don't forget that Pac 12 title game coming up right after us. Oregon. Roxon looking over his shoulder. He's on his way to yet another one for the Soaring Eagle, Jimmy Johns, Suzuki. And Ken Roxon's the winner in Canada. So we're ready to drop the game. Around the outside. Alessi with the whole shot. Dungey flies by into the lead. So aggressive with his start this year. And it pays off once again. Alessi takes him high. And Roxon comes by as well. He comes to the inside of the RCH riders here tonight, making it into the main event. Pretty solid run for them. Help along the way, but he's got to chase down Dungey. He's got the speed and the aggressive ride. He's sweeping around that flat corner, the end of the straightaway. Decisions as we have a battle for the lead. Roxon has caught up to Dungey. Oh, in this section here. Dungey fighting for that line on the outside of the whoops. Indianapolis is underway once again. Now, what will Roxon do differently? Take the line away. Back inside. Plays this. Going to hold him up just a tad bit. He is way off to the inside. Well, there's Dungey. Here comes Ken Roxon. Takes 
Leaves it wide, but not wide enough. They are one and two in the championship standings. Roxon has got to beat him to the launch. Oh, and Dungey misses the triple. And here comes Roxon. Will he have the checkers first? Possibly follow his lines. Oh, and Roxon makes a mistake. And there goes Dungey. Dungey went after Roxon, and Carlos Rivera encourages his rider. So mentally uh, demanding. As you, oh, look at it. Dungey comes up a little bit short. It makes the least amount of mistakes. Will one of them make a mistake here? White flag. Roxon giving him everything he can. Into the rhythm section of the opposite end of the stadium. And Roxon loses a little bit of ground. All down again. Dungey with the win in Indy. Wow. Well, between Ryan Dungey and Ken Roxon, they shake hands. Goes wide and makes it work, but Roxon is right there. It's a top two in points. He sets third in points. He's up to fourth on the track right now. Today they get around Dungey. They chased each other the full distance. 20 lap, 450 main event. Have a freshly groomed track. The Supercross get out of the gate right, but he stuck around the inside of the first turn as Dungey was on the outside. Leader can change things drastically. Of course, 45 points, Ralph. <laughs> That's a huge champion in that 200 start as we continue to watch this battle for the lead. He's really starting to heat it up, and he's showing Dungey that front wheel, letting the champ clean race. You want him to think about what's behind him. You want him to be worried that you can't get Roxon take it. Roxon comes up the inside. Dungey squares it out here in St. Louis. They swap it back again into the one section, enjoying the battle at the front of the field. Wow. But to a championship caliber rider like Dungey, you really have a hard time not risking it all. Two different choices here. The spider cam giving this here with the two riders. Jeff, this race is on, and Roxon has had a problem. Roxon has had a big problem. A lot of speed, lays it in. And as we've seen happen so many times. Flow towards the first turn. Will he be a champ today? What a start by Dungey. Dungey, perfect execution. Roxon sets second. Anderson Here we go. In fourth. So those title contenders are within striking distance. Roxon and Anderson. These three have finished one, two, and three over today, and he's quick through this one section. Here he comes. Shoulder. They're bar to bar in mid flight over the finish line jump. And Dungey knows in second place if Roxon wins. Contact there. It's unbelievable. Championship is on the line today. He still, week after week, is so focused, all the hard work in. He's, he, he thinks there is no uh, no reason to lay up at this point. He has been so fast the last two weeks. Uh, has to be frustrated. On the number 94, has been hung up with some lap riders trying to work his way past me. These two have battled over the last three weeks. And Ken Roxon will remain a thorn in his side as he wins the inaugural visit of Moss Ryan Dungey, be the 2016 champion. Shot, Dungey sits in about sixth place. Victories this season. I mean, I mean this has got to be the, the biggest margin. Roxon, his fifth victory of 2016 for Ken Roxon. And the celebration is underway. One of the rider that makes the most passes in this photo. Let's go race it. Final Marsha trying to steal the whole shot from him, but Dungey has it. Marsha, the 51 second, but not for long. Here comes Ken Roxon. And uh, that was one of the keys to the moto because we said this opening round often does. It's a mistake by Dungey. To yeah, him. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he cut him yeah. off right there. Oh, oh, see the mistake Roxon. by Roxon. All dry. They've thrown down some water. So the track has changed between motos a lot. And Roxon already showing why he was the 2014 champion. Got everything dialed. Racing. He had nothing to do. So he and his girlfriend, Courtney, went and got lunch. And next door, there was a uh, manicure, pedicure place. The potential speed secret. And then everybody's going to have to do it before Glenn Helen. So yes, got a pedicure yesterday that he won two years ago. Ken Roxon dominates it in Hangtown. 
Fly 30-second board is sideways. Gate is down. Let's go racing. Dungey and Justin Brayton battling it out. Who's going to end up with a whole shot here? Oh, Roxon down on the Whoa. inside. Ken Roxon to the lead ahead of Dungey. Brayton pushed back to third. Oh, wow, Ivar pushed wide. He kept it tight. And look at this. He's already straight. So comes back. <laughs> and, and look at this. Look at his lead. He's gone. Where, where is everybody else? There's Dungey's practice. They're now 234s. Hey, remember this guy? Number 94? Oh, yeah, that's right. He is absolutely checked out. We chatted with him for a while. He doesn't appear to take the racing that seriously. Certainly not for someone at this very, very, very top level. More unpredictable. Yep. Thunder showers. Long way to go. Ken Roxon wins. He gets the best of it. He went too far wide. He had it, but for Eli Tomac, that's as good as it gets. And Tomac fighting for third and fourth. Now Tomac back to the inside on Anderson. Yeah, you see the guys. No. Smooth move there by Tomac. Closing the door. Still triples up the hill. See, I think uh, they should have left it. Just let these guys really have to tough it out. But this is what we wanted. That maintains that gap. Now with uh, Tomac behind him, let's see if he can do the same thing. All right, so they've moved some of the, they've kind of almost back some of that mud. Tomac, ooh, whoa. He's comfortable as we've seen, um, probably because he can hear the crowd getting excited and he knows he's got a good pace. All of a sudden, there's a green number three right there. Well, that's what the crowd's responding to. We indeed have a challenge for Rocks and Eagle and on multiple continents, on multiple sized machines. They uh, battled for most of the different year brands. for the 250 title, <laughs> different brands off the track, but you can guarantee that Tomac would like nothing more than to beat Roxon right now. Back on the screen. And it looks like a big gap for Roxon, so that might be it. Yes. Yep, he stuffed the front end there. I, I, I just, just, yeah. Just got that front end. He's the fast. He's, you could argue, but I would say he's the fastest guy on the planet on, on that given day. Cruise for Ken Roxon, who once again takes motor number one. <laughs> Brock Tinkle has the whole shot on the soaring eagle Jimmy John Suzuki. Good start to the KTM. They're all scrambling to figure out where is the traction and how about Roxon leaping around Cole Sealy who's on the number. Uphill battle trying to stay with him from there on. Once again. Roxon was just ahead. Tomac did get back at him, and look at him goes off the Brayton around the outside. And he's got him. Not day like this. Andrew Short was wearing this ice jacket it's filled with stuff that goes in the freezer. He wears this. Fans, but umbrellas. Doesn't really matter now. We're just four minutes into a 30 minute plus two lap race. Tickle, they race past the Fram Mechanics area. Roxon going to try to make the pass on the outside. He's got it. What he's doing because, well, Roxon's been the fastest man on track all season long. Surprising, he was hurt. He couldn't race the rest of the year. So it's up to Eli Tomac now to try to dig into the lead that Ken Roxon has. We're back. It's the Red Bull Tennessee National. Final moments, three lap laps to go. You can start to see them in the same section of racetrack. tomac has got his teeth in him. And this is exactly one, almost every time. And this gap is small, and the crowd are on their feet and cheering. Race pass that continues to close. That gap is shrinking. Two laps to go when they get to the finish line. A mistake from Roxon. tomac has got an opening. He's down to the inside. Can he make it work? Roxon knows he's there now. So Tomac has set himself up brilliantly for it. Roxon able to beat him to the spot. To him a few times, such as in the first moto earlier today, but Roxon always able to respond. Now, this section has been great. That's where he's looking for oh. daylight. Oh, Roxon off the track. And that could have been cover. That could have been way worse. Luckily, there was nothing that affected him. Right there. He's got a wheel on it to the inside. Oh, they go past the frame mechanics area. The mechanics invent a new one. He goes from outside to inside. Oh. They come together. Contact. Roxon able to hold him off. They have him now. They're side by side, different lines. Roxon's got the shorter line. Tomac takes a long way around. White flag, one left foot, uphill triple. They both negotiated perfectly. Now a tight corner, and this section right here is going to get tricky. There's right. Tanner coming up. He's on the inside again. Oh. He runs it in deep. Oh, oh couldn't mistake. get a clean exit. That's just more lap traffic coming up. Is this going to play a factor? Oh, one of the lappers almost got cross right in corners. That'll lead them to the finish. He's got to get a little closer. There's too much yes. of a distance. Hopefully the lapper gets out of the way. Talk close enough is Tomac. Under pressure at both motos, Ken Roxon sweeps it, goes 1-1. One, one. Closest challenge he had down to a checkered flag this season, but despite the big points lead, he doesn't care about that. Roxon used to come to the United States and run some amateur races, and they used to battle it out. They're pretty friendly with each other off the track. Georgia. Yes, Ken Roxon is just cooling off slightly. Yeah. 
and he's off in second. Geico Honda and Monster Energy Kawasaki, 19 and three. I saw a bike go down early. Eli, you've got to take the lead and put some distance because I Ross might be okay. right. There he is. Gonna have to work at this again, but he's got to make this happen. I'm telling you, Whoa! there's Tomac with a drive <laughs> all through. Well. He said Tomac's got to charge early. That's exactly what he did. There wasn't even much of an opening. He's trying to get Bogle for second. Well, right now, look at Roxton. Just charges. Made that look so easy. Just talking about. So, no excuses. This is the top two in points. Tomac led for Tomac this oh, year. A lap. Let's be honest. Not laps. Yeah. That is the first lap when you see him. Yeah, he was gone. He was leading pretty much every lap until he had a big crash and injury at the third race of the year last year. And is he there today? Can he hold off the 94? Ken has caught him, that's for sure. It's a 30 minute. They have different riding styles, so it's hard to explain, but it, sometimes it makes it tough for Roxon to figure out where to go. Just so fast, he can go anywhere on the track and make it look like it's the premier line. He's going for it down the inside. The thing has it got to be for Tomac when you're trying everything and Roxon is just breathing down your neck all the time. He wants to be out front of pass. He does it. Tomac does it triple. This is going to be it right here. Rocks around the outside. Don jumping and rocks into the lead. Yeah, that's a big boo-boo there from Eli Tomac. You've got to jump LaRocco's leap. On it. But you saw what happened. It shows you the difference between jumping LaRocco's leap and not doing it. Stick just like Kenny rocks it. Give him a little treat, K-Rock. Go to the outside. Let's do this. 1-1 one, one with a huge performance at Redbud. Ken Roxton dominates here. Interesting. Uh, engine swap is very nerve-wracking going to the line for the second motor because you just second never know. Win of the day. Oh, Roxton. Up to Bogle once again with a no-footer. Woo! Four straight hole shots for Bogle, but here comes Christoph Porcel. Still goes for it. Oh! And he rams Bogle's front wheel, and Bogle goes down. Lines came together. Get by Porcel and stretch it out. He goes the long way around on a smooth line. He's got it. Has he? Yes, he seals the deal. Square it up. He's yeah, going he for is. it. And he's got a power slide going. Woo. Side by side once again. I think Tomac's going to seal the deal. But... Energy Kawasaki has caught your leader. Ken Roxon, who's on the soaring eagle. Jimmy John Suzuki. Phoenix area. Yes, the atmosphere down here is unbelievable right now. The Fran Mechanics area, uh, the, all the team members are going... Uh, anyone's friend in motocross because they don't have windshield wipers, so you can't clear it. So you have to use tear-offs. The problem is so much sand, even off your own front tire, and you hear the crowd just getting pumped up again. There's Oscar Wynn and Tomac at the bottom. You saw Tomac's last lap time was in the nines, whereas Roxon was in the tens. So close it right back up. But Roxon, not one to crack under pressure. He knows how to control a race. Roxon knows he's there. He can hear him. I don't know if there's room for Tomac to make it happen here, but he's certainly putting the heat on. This mistake will have an opening. This is where Tomac made it happen, the first motor. Did Roxon learn? Yes, he goes to the inside, takes that line away. There's a motocross right now, going at it. They have literally left the pack behind 22 plus seconds. One. Look at the difference. Roxon, you can see his number, no problem. The 94 with the red background. You want to get in front and try and put the hammer down and get out of there. As the lap is going, oh, hang on, yeah, yeah come on by. You're not early into the race. Halfway through, practically this one will give you a top five rundown. Pike fifth, Nicoletti sixth. Watch this. Oh, big run around the outside. Whoa. Long way around for Tomac. Can Roxon square him up though? Roxon's now trying to figure out where to go. He goes around the outside, but Tomac seals the deal. And Roxon looks like he wants to come back. Roxon is not giving up. Whatever changes they made, he is feeling preppy because look at this. He's got you can also save 15% or more of your insurance if you call Geico. If you want to call though, I'd advise you to keep your eyes on the TV. Rip your feet off. And I promise you, once your feet get ripped off, it can turn ugly very quickly. We actually saw that earlier this morning in the Constellation race. This is a unique part of Southwick. We actually have a... Whoa! Tomac has gone down just like that, and Ken Roxon has taken the lead. Again, Tomac to the inside, takes Whoa. the lead. Roxon squares it up. Roxon's going to try to beat him in the exit. No, a little something extra, and was immediately able to respond. Yeah, always saw at the tail end. It was... And... Oh, just tucks the front end. See how shiny it is. You can yeah. see this. That's where I'm talking about the base. It's still raining just a little bit out there. It's kind of on and off, but vision is becoming an issue for these guys. Oh, look at that. Even the suspension techs are getting crazy. They won this. Roxton's out right there. Get back. In fact, the track closed completely. Didn't even hold local races any longer. It's been revived. Some veterans who used to race here. What a great way to bring it back with a phenomenal battle. But who is going to win it? Will it be Eli Tomac?
Tomac out of Colorado, son of the mountain bike legend, John Tomac, who's at all the races with Eli. Like this. Now Tomac's got a few more lap riders to get through. He does it. Eli Tomac wins the Red Bull Southwind. So that's big if you're Eli Tomac mentally. And a nice little shout out from uh, Roxon to Tomac. These guys. That was like a race of a, or battle you could call of a lifetime right there for us. Um, I don't know. That was that was that was a good race. Eli and then the Cowie team, you know, they absolutely crushed it today. So I tried to put up a fight in the second moto, and still a good result. So I'm not too bummed. I'm going to keep my head up and and I keep charging. That's for sure. Oh, oh, Roxon getting pumped alive, and he's got it. The Red Bull KTM rider was third in the first moto, leading right here. He's got the orange man. Well, that should create for a great moto as the the man who won pretty much almost every race. As bad as it looked, he is so good at just slicing and dicing. Look at him. He slices and dice right past Tomac and a whole bunch of others. Tomac going to try to get him back. Oh. oh, he bumps into Benny Bloss and still manages to make the pass. He made contact with someone. He and Tomac are going to try an outside line to get around the teammates, both Ted of Brayton and the one buried in the pack, but it looked a lot worse early on. But look at Roxy just carry that speed a long way around. Woo. Two riders go where no one else is going and still do it faster than anyone. But Porcel tries to fight him off and Ken Rocks just says, I'm just curious what that is. My only guess that I can think of offhand right now is he makes another pass. Gone from probably one. Ten to third and looking to go for second around Andrew Short. Oh On the outside goodness. of these sandwiches, this is a clinic. And he says he feels like that's the way he's always been. In practice, today he was the fast qualifier, but normally that's not the case. He said he just is not an issue for him. He loves to just <laughs> save time wherever he can. And now he's going off to Muskin. Okay. Ken must have been the top five on lap one. No, sorry, he was actually buried. But now he's side by side. Oh, my goodness. Got him. Ken Roxon. I'm sure he's a little ticked off that someone elbowed him down the start straight. Pretty much flawless throughout 2016 on this soaring eagle. Jimmy John Suzuki wins the first moto by a big gap, wins the second moto by a big gap. Ken Roxon sweeps it here at Millville. Gonna lead them around and grab the whole shot in his second moto. An army of KTM's behind him. Whole shot, which he doesn't actually get that often. Nicoletti right there in the 34 also. Come through next. That's your top 10. Oh, there's a guy we've been talking about. Oh, Ken Roxon. Let's see the gap. It's 22 seconds, couple of laps, and actually continues to add to his lead. While doing that, it's now 43 seconds. Nothing has changed. Ken Roxon continues to roll. Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross. Shaley on the 32, leading them in and out of turn one. Nice job. The fill-in rider. He had Bud's Creek. I'd say the fans go nuts, but I can't hear them. But absolutely, I'm behind him. Ken Roxon. Yep. Roxon's going to make short work of this, I believe. Watch yep. this. Yeah, these guys. Me, it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Yeah, these guys oh. got to go back. Whoa, a little difficult okay. for him. So the feet off. Almost a little mistake cresting the top of that hill. You've got to look for tiny errors. Yeah, out of this guy. We're critical with him. And no doubt, he is a worthy 2016 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross champion. Great job, Kenny. Ken Roxon, how good does it feel to hold that number one? There's so many people I have to thank, like my, my whole entire team, Oscar, my girlfriend Courtney, Blake, and practice mechanic Keith. And we finally made it. I don't know what else to say. Motocross champion. He won it in 2014, some adversity in 2015. They did not give up on each other. And thirdly, just end the season on a great note. Let's go. Nice. Andrew Short is going to get the whole shot in his final race. We were afraid they wouldn't have the bike ready. Out front, battling it out. Barsha, Roxon, Nicoletti quickly get by. Now it's worth the Moto2. A little mistake, though. Uh, Roxon is so good on these opening laps. Around Nicoletti. Man, Short got shuffled back. Quickly, not sure what happened there. Uh, compared to that, just about any other sport. It's amazing that a couple of riders have been able to be perfect. Being near perfect is still pretty darn good. Rookies, it's just been one of those seasons. Fantastic. Makes you wonder. Title for the second time. We'll see if he can do it again next year. He ends 2016 on the highest note possible. Kind of feel like, yeah, he's probably got a couple secrets, but they're not very secretive. He's the kind of guy to like.